time. And now she's here. She's doing a, a tour to speak. And I'm very happy that she's here. But after she's done, Paul Lozon, the coordinator of 40 Days for Life campaign, is going to say a few words and we'll have a, a closing prayer. But now I invite you, Linda, to come up and talk to us. This is the face of pro-life. Love to see each one of you. I am very excited about the 40 Days for Life and what it's achieving, and it's growing and becoming more um, the normal it, It's being wed to pro-life. Uh, it, it's there and it's going to remain there. And I find that very exciting. When I'm in prison and, and 40 Days for Life is on, I get updates. People mail me in from LifeSite and it's talking about the baby saved, the witness, and it's exciting. It's really exciting. Because 40 Days for Life removes the line of discrimination that is between the unborn and the born, that we are saying to the world that the unborn are us, that we are one in humanity, we are one in person with them, and that we will not leave them alone. We challenge, we challenge the legal fiction that permits, protects, and promotes the destruction of innocent children. We agree with the, there's a saying on the little flyer you're being handed out of Saint Marie Eugenie. She says, Love never says, I have done enough. I like that saying. And I would say that you can never do too much for the unborn. It's impossible to do too much for our unborn friends. There's nothing that we should hold back and feel that it's costing us because it's costing them desperately. And I'm talking to you tonight about Mary Wagner. Am I talking loud enough to people here? Mary Wagner is a, a woman from BC. She's 37 years old. She has done time in jail in BC for pro-life before I even knew her. She had been in France for four years studying to be a nun and her nature and her heart is to be a meditative nun. Very, very, very holy young woman. It's been such a joy to see her um, absolute sweet faith in the prison system. And she came in 2008 to Toronto and started being arrested with me. And then it got where we were talking one day and she said, Linda, they arrest us for being in a place. They charge us with trespassing. They charge us with, uh, with her. It's handing out a long stem rose to women in the waiting room that has a little card attached telling them where they can get help. And there have been women that have, uh, in response to what Mary has done, have left the abortion clinic without having their abortion. So she's had a number of babies saved in the last four years from doing that. And she said to me, Linda, what I really want is I wish the court would focus on not what I'm doing, but what's happening to the babies. They're the issue. The court never talks about the clinic other than a business. It never talks about the clients, the women going in, other than customers. I mean, they've used that in court, calling the women going into the clinic customers. And she said, Linda, I wish they would talk about the children and that I'm there to defend them. Then I was at my mother's visiting. Uh, Charles Lagosi phoned me. He's a constitutional lawyer that was in BC, 
went to the States teaching constitutional law for 10 years. He wrote a brilliant dissertation that the title of it is, part of it is, when person, when human and person mean the same thing in law. And that article, you can find it on the computer, was published in a law and ethics journal. It's about 150 pages long. So Charles Lugosi is the perfect person that Mary's heart desired to take her case forward. And Charles Lugosi will be arguing for Mary. There's a portion of the law that says using force in defense of others. Now the phrase in there he's using is defense of others. That Mary is there to defend the unborn child. So the focus is on who is there, who needs to be defended, and the humanity of the one that is about to be fatally assaulted. And I'll tell you just a little bit from the very last court case. The Crown was asked to have women come into court that had had the abortions as A, B, C, no names, to witness that they had come in with a living child and left the abortion clinic with the child now dead. And Charles Lugosi got the Crown to admit that if in fact the child is a person, then a child was fatally assaulted. Now that is a big step in the case as it unfolds. So he will be bringing in experts on the humanity of the child to argue and present like Dr. Lilly did and Dr. Lejeune did. You can read that in that brochure you have on Borowski. In that trial, they brought in world specialists. And now you may say, well, Borowski's things got dropped because Morgenthaler challenged the Charter of Rights. The law fell through, and so Borowski's case was considered moot and stopped. So it's been 24 years, and it's time for us to go back to the Supreme Court again. And we need to knock at those doors until justice answers. So you know that when I'm in jail, I'm out for a month, I'm back in jail. I'm out for a month, I'm back in jail. I'm staying out over the winter, speaking as I'm speaking to you across Canada to raise funds for Mary's Legal Defense Fund. We're hoping by spring to have at least $150,000 to begin her case. And then we want the case to go right back to the Supreme Court. So my purpose in coming to you is to ask your help in getting this information out to others. At the back of the brochure that you've been given, there's the information on the Legal Defense Fund where the bank that and the bank account and Margie Mountain here is also handing out little envelopes where you can just put your check in there and mail it. But to let others know, and I'll be doing speaking engagements, so if, if people are interested, Campaign Life can get in touch with me. And uh, I'll be out, to, out in Alberta and BC for November, but then coming back in December. So I'm really hoping that you will also, I see this as not us as a human movement. I'm seeing very much, I see God's fingerprints over how we got in touch with Charles Lugosi, how the case happened. And just so you know, Mary's been in jail 13 months already, not since this August, but August last year. So she's been in jail 14 months plus. And all she would have to do to get out 
is signed bail saying I will not go back to the abortion clinic. Mary will not sign it because she's saying I will never agree to abandon the unborn. I, I, in conscience I can't. So Mary will remain in prison until the trial finishes in May. So please keep her in prayer. And I really believe that God is moving in this. And that again, if we have the faith and courage to step out, and I think we need to because it's not, we can't afford to do it. We can't afford not to do it. So we will not leave the courts alone. We will not leave the government alone. And above all, we won't leave the unborn alone. So thank you for being here. And thank you for your loyal friendship to our unborn friends. Thank you, Linda. And we hope, well, we wish you well as you do your tour to raise money for Mary. There uh, is a collection going around. You can take the envelopes home if you want to write a check and mail it in. There are more envelopes if you didn't get one.